contact with us at cubnlive.com. I am your host, Troy, and this is Troy's News and Reviews. I want to thank you for coming to CUBN. Come to our website. Please come to our website. I want to thank you for all the support that you have given the, the network and all the help and everything that you guys have done. And it's just amazing how Jesus is stepping in and, and situating everything and getting things to work right Amen to Jesus. Jesus is where it's at. You leave everything aside, push all your baggage aside, and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, and you will grow, 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 and grow in Jesus' name. Amen. I feel the change. Israel's ambassador sees new signs of hope on 70th anniversary. Amen. We still see a lot of hostility. But I feel the change. I feel the change, especially since Ambassador Haley stepped in a little bit more than a year ago. We've achieved a lot at the UN. UN Ambassador Danny Dannon. Despite hostilities at the United Nations and looming dangers at home, Israel's UN Ambassador Danny Dannon remains hopeful for the future and for achieving peace with the Palestinians. Israel is a young country. Today we celebrate only 70 years of independence. So maybe it will take another five years, another 10 years, but once we find a real partner, we will be there. We will be willing to work together with them. The same way we did with Egyptians, and the Jordanians, explained the Israel UN representative. Ambassador Dan made his comments in New York City during an exclusive television interview with CBN's Gordon Robertson. Gordon Robertson. He said the United Nations remains hostile territory for the Israeli ambassador. But he praised U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley for changing the atmosphere of the international body. We still see a lot of hostility. But I feel the change. I feel the change, especially since Ambassador Haley stepped in a little bit more than a year ago. We've achieved a lot at the U.N. Dannon told Robertson, there's still a big difference between what U.N. Ambassador tell tell him privately and how they act publicly. He said privately ambassadors will reach out to him and say how much they appreciate and admire Israel. But then they still vote against Israel. Hmm. Why, my challenge is to close the gap between the private UN and the public UN. Ambassador Dannon said. Robinson asked Dannon about the United Nations Refugees and Works Agency, which is abbreviated UNRWA, and claims that it will run out of money this summer if the United States withholds $360 million from the agency. In 1949, it was established to support the Palestinians' refugees, and unfortunately, the UNRWA, instead of supporting the refugees, it is inciting against Israel. Dannon mentioned U.S. taxpayers support anti-Israel tax books supplied to Palestinians schools by UNRWA. I think the U.S. should consider what they are doing with their funds, with the taxpayers' money. They should support humanitarian causes, but they should not support incitement. Robertson asked the ambassador about the Taylor Force Act, which passed the U.S. House of Representatives last December, but had been delayed in the U.S. Senate until just this week. It's designed to end pay to slay. Politicians, I mean, Palestinians authority payments that reward acts of terrorism against Israel. What? I hope it will go through because today President, Ab President Abbas 
is taking three hundred and forty million from the money he gets from the U.S. and uh, and other countries, and he gives it directly to terrorists who kill Israelis, Israelis, and American. Explained Dannon. The Taylor Force Act is named after a young American Army veteran who, in 2016, was murdered by a Palestinian terrorist in Tel Aviv. Dannon said he met with Taylor's parents recently in New York. I told them we salute them for the way they speak and present the case of their brave son. And I hope they r- really, I hope, I hope the reality will change and American taxpayers' money will not be used to support terrorism. Ladies and gentlemen, we work hard for our money. We, I mean, we get our money taxed and the money goes somewhere that we are clueless. And then they make the book so big that we don't, we can't read where the money goes. We just work and get paid and our money goes to something that we have no clue where it goes. Does the money help us out when we're down and out? Does the money help us out when when we get to a point where we're going to be living on the streets? Does the money help us out at all? Does it, ladies and gentlemen? We need to know where the money is going. We need smart people inside of our government to understand What is going on with the money? And then when we find these things out, then we get something to say about it. We need somebody in there that can situate the problem, fire people. That is not doing their job. I can look outside and see all of the stuff that's happening out there. It's just not getting done. And then when I see that kind of stuff, then I'm thinking, where's all the money going? I mean, follow these people, ladies and gentlemen. Follow all of these people that are directly dealing with all of our tax money. Follow them. You will see that they live large. How they're making all this money is beyond me. They know how to control the money. They know how to make the money more money. And to the point where they don't have to worry about money ever again. Because we constantly are giving them money. And they're constantly screwing us and we got to understand this and we got to find out why we got to find out you know we just have to find out we give tax money so our roads can be built we give tax money so our bridges can be built we give tax money to help us in a situation where we are down and out we need tax money to get us our jobs back we need tax money to help other countries get back on their feet Only if they really need it. We need somebody to get in there, situate the countries. If we're going to help them and we are the allies, we need somebody smart to get in there and situate the country. Not some mental case person that don't know what they're doing. They're only looking to make more money off of this country. We need somebody on our side. We need our side. Our people go there. All right? We don't need all this gibberish stuff. You know, we don't need a smart guy in there that just wants to make money for themselves and be rich for themselves. We don't want that. That is not what we hire these people for. These people should be getting the same as us or less, not making more money than us. It's just ridiculous. If you want to if you want a job like that, you just sign papers and say yes and no. Come on, people, do your job. Right now you ain't doing your job. Look outside. How many bums we got out there? How many churches out there? How many Christians out there that's got to situate and fix all your problems? All, all the Christians are creating communities, creating these facilities, and helping all these people out with their own money. So they got to give their tax money to the, to, the, to the government, and then they got to use their own money to fix what's going on in the streets when the government ain't doing nothing. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I just had to throw that out. I'm just sick and tired of going outside seeing this, this, all this hate. You know, all of this, this, this hate and then people just turning into this bums and druggies and drug dealers because that is the easy way out, ladies and gentlemen. Easy way out. Why can't the government make it like, like how they, like how they deal drugs, right? It's easy to deal drugs. You go out there, you deal the drugs, 
You make the money. Just like that. Just like that. Every, it's so easy. It's so easy to make it. Now, why can't they do that with our lives right now? In reality, where we work, they should make it so easy. So easy to get a job. So easy. So easy to make money. They should make it that easy. They should make it that easy where you can get a job, get paid, and get a living. And hey, if you want more money, what well, do this and you get more money easily. You don't have to jump through hoops, go through all these corporations, jump through all this stuff, try to get the most highest of highest pays, and you got to slave and just bust your butt just to get there. And you, you screw your family up everything because you got to work extra hours just to make a living. Why is it that they cannot make life a better, way better, easier than getting, making drugs, selling drugs off the streets? Why can't they do that? Because, ladies and gentlemen, they just don't. They just don't want to do it, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want to give our money away back to us. They want to keep the money for themselves and try to figure out ways to get us to give them more money and make it more complicated for us. If we turn into a bum, if we turn into a drug dealer, they don't care. They don't care. They say, okay, if that's your easy way out, take it. Take it. Do that. You can get thrown in jail and then you're probably going to die. That's it. We don't care about you. We just want to keep screwing you over so we can take all your money and spend it on whatever we got to do. Come on, people. You got to wake up. Wake up. In Jesus' name.